Hello, Bridget here, and welcome back to my channel. Yay! Uh, happy Wednesday. Um, if you're new to my channel, we're just gonna do a quick intro to this because I've had a few new subscribers since uh, last Wednesday. Uh, Wednesdays, I do variety things. So whatever I feel like doing, I do it essentially. So if you see random stuff from me, that's because of this. And sometimes, if I like feeling spicy enough, I'll take a request or two. I haven't gotten any because I'm still a really small channel, but yeah. Future, I will take some requests for Wednesday content. And Saturday, if you like gaming, my gaming stuff is on Saturdays. So, that's where the consistency is. This one's just for fun, so I don't get burnt out on games. Anyway, so today's video, I'm going to have to kind of skirt around some of the language for it, because YouTube does not like this type, type of thing, even if there's nothing risque about it. But yeah. If people have seen this in the background of my, uh, of my videos, you probably have a lot, actually. Um, this is a poll to my landlord. It's a coat rack. But, yeah. It, it's just pink. I'm hoping that, like, YouTube doesn't recognize what it is because it's pink. But, yeah. But, anyway, I've been doing this for a while as a hobby. And I decided to ask some of my followers on Artful what they would want to know about the poll stuff. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to be answering a few questions from there. So yay! If you have any questions for it, I can make a part two and you can just leave them down below. Also, just a little reminder that this is a safe zone. No hate, no foulness about it, you know. Keep that to yourself because I will delete it and block you, so. Just heads up. Don't even bother. So here we go. First question. How do you feel when you first start polling? How did I feel? Well, mentally, I was super, super excited to finally start uh, my pole journey. Essentially, I used to be a figure skater as a child. Uh, short version of that is that it was too expensive. I did it from the time I was five to the time I was nine. Got too expensive, couldn't do it anymore. And then as a teenager, when I was trying to get back into it, I was told that I could never figure skate again because I have some abnormalities in my legs and I have a connective tissue disorder that would make me easily injured and that I could blow out my knees. <laughs> Regardless, if I pulled off a move right or wrong, it would happen. So I decided that I would never return. <sighs> when I was about 17, 18 years old, I saw a video on YouTube of a pole dancer doing uh, a routine to Tainted Love, and I decided right then and there that I wanted to do that. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I want my replacement for my figure skating. Um, it was delayed, though, because I got super sick. I, got, I ended up with Crohn's disease and told the connective tissue, blah, blah, blah. There's videos on that. There's videos on that. You'll see. You just click around. You'll find them. <laughs> and, yeah. So I was super, super excited about all that. Uh, finally got to do something. Uh, physically, after my full first class and second class, I felt horrendous. Every bone in my body ached. Everything hurt. My like, oh, I pulled every muscle that I owned but in a good way. So I hurt, but I was still excited, and I still kept returning, obviously. <laughs> Just how it is, I guess. I have a glutton for pain. Except not like that. Oh, not like that. So I don't think of that. Anyway, moving on. The second person in this just went right in for it and was like, is it hard to do with having EDS and POTS? So I'll leave the videos linked below explaining it a little bit more, but I have a connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, or EDS. Um, it causes my joints to be floppy and stretchy, and I have a lot of joint issues. Uh, POTS, I've been recently diagnosed with. It, my autonomic nervous system does not work correctly, so when I stand up or change postures, my heart will start racing, and I'll start getting woozy, my blood pressure might do weird things. That's just a quick rundown on it. But yeah, links below, you can watch it if you want to. But, yeah. So, I actually asked my doctor about poll before I actually started it because I just thought it'd be a good idea and she actually said it would be a good idea to do it with EDS because it helps strengthen the muscles around my joints and I'd have less joint issues. That turned out to be true. So yay, EDS has not really stopped it too much. Um, it just has limited some of the moves that I'm able to do, which is fine. I'm okay with that. POTS didn't hit me until February of this year, which it is a comorbidity of EDS to go together. But yeah, that has limited me greatly right now. I'm trying to work with it. I can't say a whole lot about it right now. I just know I'm supremely frustrated. Wow, this hair is not doing what I want it to do. So we might just, you know, 
I tried to fix it without drawing attention to it, but you know what? It just didn't happen. It didn't happen. Anyway, um, it has limited me greatly. I don't invert or go upside down as much as I used to. I'm still trying to build up a tolerance for it. Essentially, what happened is it put me down on my ass and has me kind of starting from the bottom and having to work my way back up again with what I can do with exercise, if that makes any sense essentially hit me like a brick and now I have to retrain a lot of things but I can still do them for the most part so I'm hoping there's hope I'm trying to keep hope <laughs> trying not to let my chronic illness take everything away from me lol <laughs> but yeah let's just move on before I start spiraling indefinitely so <laughs> question number three what kind of muscles do I need to start hmm well do you have muscles any muscles anything at all can you lift your arm you're good you're entirely good. Come as you are, essentially. You do not need anything for, like, physically for pole, essentially. You just walk in and you get trained, essentially. We start you at the beginning and you go up. And you, for most places that I know, we'll work with you and strength train and help you. So you don't need to strength train before you ever walk into your first class. It just... If you want to, you can, because I know some people do do it, but yeah. If you want to start a pole class right this second, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, again, if you have any health conditions, blah, 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 ask your doctor first. But yeah, if you don't have any of that, it doesn't matter. You don't need to hit the gym first. You don't need to lose a few pounds first. If you would like to do it and you know where to do it or you can find where to do it and there's local, go do it. <laughs> it's okay. Somebody asked me how long I've been doing this, and the answer is two years. Two years. Uh, I started out in a local studio that I don't go to anymore for um, reasons that I can't get into because I feel like this person would sue me because that's what she's doing. But yeah, I started there, and then after some controversy happened there, I moved. And since, so that was 2019, uh, at the end of 20, I mean, in the beginning of 2020, I was starting to take private lessons with other people, but COVID really took the crap out of that. Um, so, I'm mostly training on my own now, but yeah, two years, almost three years. I think August is three years. I have to ask my pole sister. She'll know. Yeah, someone's just, like, asking me what training is required for. I'm assuming it's, like, the other question about, like, how do you start. Um, you don't need any training. Just come as you are. But if you are asking, like, in general what kind of training you need once you start, that's up to you. You can train whatever way you would like. Um, as I said before, in lessons and in w when you take lessons. And just, if you are practicing on your own, you just will do things like conditioning, like moves that will help strength train and stuff like that. And it's all at your own pace, so if that's adequate enough for you, go right ahead. That's mostly all I do. I'm not comfortable going to a gym anyway right now. But yeah, if you think you need more, do more. If you think you don't want to, then hey, whatever. It's all on you. <laughs> okay. Someone's asked me, do I just hang off the pole? Like, it's right here in my living room. Do you just kind of hang off of it and do whatever? I'm like, yes, yes, I do. I walk in here and just slouch around on it all the time. I do have to remind myself to take it off spin because the pole does spin by itself or it's static where it stays in place. I have to remind myself to lock it in place because sometimes I'll grab it and it's on spin and I just go flying off into a direction because, you know, I did not account for that. So yeah, not great. You can break your phone. Don't do that. <laughs> Always lock your pole. Always check your pole too, honestly. Oh. So uh, this question is... I'm going to have to skirt over a little bit, but this person's asked me, have you ever been mistaken for a not safe for work worker because of it? And does it annoy you when, if you do get mistaken? I am not a not safe for work worker. Um, on like clubs and stuff like that. No, um, I've never done it. I did think about doing it before 2020, but I, uh, I, now I can't because of my health issues. I'm not to the point, but, um, yeah, it was a thought. I have nothing against uh, not so for work workers at all. Like you guys, love ya. But yeah, no, that was me personally. And no, I don't get annoyed when people automatically assume that I do something like that because I find that there's no shame in that line of work. Pole has its roots in it, and it will always have its roots in it. There's no way of taking it out. And if you find somebody who's trying to, they're wrong. No, don't do that. 
don't do that on me. I have a whole rant about this kind of thing and the history of poll and how people try to pretend that it didn't come from where it did from not safe for work backgrounds and stuff like that. And I can't get into it in this video because it'd be super long if it did. I'd get super angry. And yeah, no, but like, I have deep respect for anyone who does not safe for work art. You guys are amazing. So somebody asked me, do I ever slip on the, on the pole? Uh, yes, you do all the time. I know, I know. It looks like people just like gorilla grip onto it and they don't move at all. But like, I'll have to put in a compilation of me biting it or something like that or something like something. I'll try to, to um, have a compilation of that happening right about here. <laughs> Uh, the pole that I have up that's pink right now, this one, is a powder coated pole. There are different types of finishes and that's just another one. This is one of, I think, excuse me, I got itchy face. But this one is, I think, the second most stickiest one. I think the most stickiest one is silicone. Uh, that one you have to wear clothes on or else it just really will take your skin off. But yeah, that is pretty sticky so I don't slip as much on this one and when I do it hurts like a mother effer but yeah but the other pole that I do own it's a stage one so go I can put it outside it's so fancy but that's a stainless steel and that one I slip on it like oh all the time it it hurts it doesn't feel great it looks silly um, I know how you see all these videos of you know dancers just looking so graceful it looks hilarious when somebody uh, slips and bites it. Of course, not if they get hurt. It's not funny if they get hurt, but most times people don't really get hurt. So don't laugh at people getting actually hurt. So so in my clips, I don't actually act get hurt. I just slip <laughs> and fall and it's okay. I'm all right. <laughs> to go along with that, the next person asked is, doesn't it pinch your skin when you move on the metal? Uh, yes. It does. It hurts. Um, I'll have more clips probably of that here. But uh, it does. Um, the only thing keeping you up on it is yourself most of the time, all the time. So, uh, yeah, it pinches. You'll get pole burn from it, it uh, bruising. Uh, I've taken off a little bit of skin on my feet in places before. It all hurts. And a lot of the moves do hurt to begin to start doing. Um, and you just kind of have to bear with it. If you're not somebody who likes it, you can always stop. But, like, yes. Uh, most of the time, starting new moves, it hurts. Uh, sometimes it always hurts. Sometimes it doesn't. I just... You build a tolerance for it. You don't even recognize... Like, you don't even really think about it anymore with some of the moves that you've been doing for years. I don't know if that helps. It, it's really hard to be like, Oh, yeah, this sport that I like doing hurts so bad like it bruises me it rips skin off I get pole burn on me it's it's great I love it without sounding a little bit crazy so and the very last one we're there we're finally there like the very last one is how tall are the poles um that's depending on where you are the studio that I started in their poles were 14 feet I believe I'm pretty sure there were 14 feet. They were either 12 or 14, but still, that's very tall. Um, there are ones that are taller in different studios or wherever you are. I think the competition ones in some places are higher than that. I have not seen them. Mine right now, this one is about eight feet, I think. I don't know really how tall my ceilings are, but I think they're eight, it's eight feet. It's a 
tension pole, so yeah, it's attached to my ceiling up there. Um, the pole that I have that is a stage pole, it sits on a little, I have a picture of it, like over here, I'm not going to explain it when I can show a picture, but that's about 10 feet tall on its platform. So at the very top, yeah, it's 10 foot. Um, it is a little scary, I just don't look down most of the time. <laughs> But after a while, when you get used to climbing to that height, you really don't notice it too much. <laughs> so I'm hoping YouTube doesn't completely go after me for um, talking about this. I mean, I'm a small channel, so I'm hoping they'll leave me alone. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any more questions, uh, I'd love to do a few more of these Q&A type things on this because I've seen so many people wanting to know more about the sport and not getting a whole lot of information. I don't know how easy it is. It's, I mostly just ask people in the community. But yeah, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave them. And I will make an, a part two on this video. And my camera just died. Okay, well, we're, we're just going to deal with it. Everyone stay safe, stay as healthy as you can, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!